comes behind No more fair warning Where is my mind? Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase 10.5. Today I'm gonna give you five tips on recording guitar directly into the box. Let's do it. All right, folks, so we're here in Cubase and I'm doing a rocker this week. You heard a little bit of it at the top of the video. Uh, what I wanna show you is just some common sense stuff. Some of it has to do with Cubase, some of it has to do with any recording software, and some of it has to do with just common sense. But all these tips should be useful. You may know some of them, you may not know some of them. But let's start with tip number one. Dial in your tone based upon what you're playing. So on this track, I had two rhythm tracks and a lead track. And so I dialed in two separate tones for the rhythm tracks, but I knew that it was going to be mostly power chords. The riffs for this song are... Okay, so when I was dialing in my tone, I was focusing on playing stuff like that. Too often you'll see someone, uh, you know, tweaking the knobs on their pedals and their amps, and this is especially true in the box where you have access to a million pedals and a million amps, but you know, they'll be sitting there going. And then the song comes and they're, and they wonder why they don't sound good. You know why? It's because they Eddie Vettered when they should have Kurt Cobained. If you're going to be playing power chords, dial in your amps uh, with the power chords in mind and with the riffs that you're going to be playing in the song. That is tip number one. Tip number two is signal chains are plug-in manufacturer agnostic. So when you think about a guitar signal chain, often you'll think about something like uh, VST amp rack, and this is kind of a good example. Okay, you have your pre effects in VST amp rack, uh, and this is with any guitar rig. So, your pre effects will typically be your wah wah, your overdrives, your distortions, your fuzzes. We can take a look at what they have available to you, and this is kind of a laundry list. Um, you know, you might put uh, limiters maximizers and compressors if you're doing bass more often than guitar. Uh, you can put your modulation, chorus, phaser, flanger, tremolo, uh, and octaverse. Uh, you, could, you can put those in front of the amp. You can also put modulation after the amp, uh, depending on what type of effect you're going for. But definitely your wah-wah, your distortions, and your overdrives, they're all before the amp uh, you know, pre-effects. Then you have your amplifier that you choose in your cabinet. Then you have your post-effects, which are typically time-based effects. Sometimes it can be time-based effects like delay or reverb. Uh, and then you can also put modulation behind the amp if you wanted to work with your delays to make some crazy trippy effects and you, you're just sort of experimenting and vibing. But this is sort of a good outline of what a guitar signal chain looks like. Pre-effects, amplifier, cabinets, post-effects, microphones. Uh, and that's true whether you're using VST amp rack or not. So for uh, my rhythm track here that you hear, I'm using QuadraFuzz, the built-in Steinberg plugin, as my before the amp overdrive to tighten things up. And what I love about QuadraFuzz is it's kind of a Swiss Army uh, plug-in for overdrive. You can have different types of overdrive where it's tape, tube, distortion, or amp based. And you can have it zero in on specific bands of the frequency spectrum. So this is just the low end. And I like that to make it like, you know, dirty and fuzzy. And then I also have some uh, brighter highs up here. Uh, just to sort of brighten up those upper mids. Uh, so you can actually dial in distortion. There are two different types of distortion. This is tube distortion. This is uh, distortion distortion. Uh, so you can dial in what type of distortion and where you want it to fall within the frequency spectrum with quadrifuzz. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then that's going into the amp, the PRS Archon. Uh, now this could be any amp. And a good analog, I'll get to free... Uh, free stuff in my fifth tip, but I'll, I'll give you some free stuff like this. But I like the Wave Super models. There's three amps. There's the Archon, the Dallas, and the V9. The Archon is the high gain amp. The Dallas is the low gain slash bluesy breakup amp. And the V9 is sort of like the mid-range, uh, mid-gain crunch type amp. 
And I've been using these a lot because uh, that since there's only three of them, with something like Guitar Rig, you look, open it up and you look at the components and the amplifiers. And there's a lot of choices in so many of them. Is the Tweed Delight or Tweed Man? Which do I need? I don't need that type of headache in my life. What I need is if I have a clean amp, I just grab the clean amp and I just tweak it until I make it work. Sometimes that saves me more time than having more options. So sometimes having more options isn't necessarily a good thing. Having just a few options that you know how to use is uh, more of a time saver. So what I'm saying is you can build out any signal chain with a bunch of different brands of effects. So if we look at my other rhythm track, I'm also using uh, Quadrifuzz and I'm, it's going into Guitar Rig where there's a uh, Screamer, uh, Ibanez Tube Screamer clone into a Plexi. Uh, and then I have for my post effects, I'm actually using Wave GTR's Spring Reverb, just a little bit of it uh, to provide a little wetness. And then this PRS uh, Archon is actually just the cabinet. So I'm just using this Archon as a impulse response loader. And I'll give you a free version of an impulse response loader at the end of the video with tip number five. But that's tip number two. You can build out a signal chain and you don't have to use just bias or just uh, Helix or just guitar rig or just VST amp rack. You can mix and match from whatever you want as long as you keep in mind, you know, this is how a signal chain would go in real life and you put them in order on your insert column here or, you know, here or whatever. Or if you do it in the mix console, you could put it together there. So that's tip number two. You can use whatever plugins you want as long as you put them in the right signal chain. Uh, tip number three is when you're doubling guitars, and I double guitars all the time. If you notice, these guitars are doubled and they're panned hard left and they're panned hard right. Uh, you can see that panning right there. Um, a lot of times they'll tell you use two different guitars, but sometimes you don't have that luxury. If you notice on this one, the waveform is a little bit thicker than this one. And that's because I use two different pickups. So I'm using two different amps, same guitar, but two different pickups. This is the neck pickup. This is the bridge pickup. That's why it's a little less thick. Uh, and that's my tip. Just switch up one little thing. And if you switch up an amp and a pickup, you may get enough differentiation where it doesn't sound like it's the same guitar playing both tracks and you're off to the races. So that's tip number three, you know, just change it something little and see if that's enough. You could, you can change guitars if you have a million guitars, but uh, sometimes when you're vibing, you just want to get down rhythm tracks quickly. You know that if you use separate amps, you're good. But tip number four is when you think about an amp, you have your amp and you also have your speaker. And this is where I think the most ground has been made up in uh, digital amplifiers, you know, recording in the box is actually with the speakers, they call them impulse responses. So I'll show you here, uh, this Marshall, like I'm using the built in, uh, speaker cabinet. If we solo this, but I'm actually also using the impulse responses from this plugin. So if I turn off the cabinet, it becomes much more harsh and uh, digital and crispy sounding. If I turn it back on, I think it sounds more realistic and lifelike or how I want it to sound. But the thing is, it's basically a cabinet going into a reverb, going into another cabinet. And that wouldn't really be possible in the real world. Let me just turn this off. Uh, but it's possible in digital guitar world. So I'd say, you know, if you have decent uh, impulse responses, I'm just using the ones that come built in with the PRS here. But if you notice, if I turn this off, it, uh, it peaks out the signal, so it causes some gnarly digital distortion. But also, uh, you know, using both of these together creates a relatively pleasing, this is a speaker, the 412 G65 on access. And then this is the matched cabinet from Guitar Rig. Sounds much better than either one of them alone. And uh, impulse responses are great if you don't have, uh, you know, PRS Archon or Guitar Rig or uh, to load your impulses, uh, you might need a free impulse response loader. And so now I'm going to get to uh, some of the free software that I like that you can download today and start using. So in this Marshall track, I used a screamer to have provide overdrive in front of the amp to sort of crunch up the signal and give it a little more clarity. Now that's obviously a uh, ode to a famous Ibanez pedal. 
But if you don't wanna buy a guitar rig, you can go to tseaudio.com and they have a few things going for them. They have this TSE 808, which is a 808 slash screamer emulation. They also have a Sans amp emulation. And I don't have these three, I don't know. Yeah, they have free versions of these too. Well, I might need to download these also. But uh, yeah, they have amps and they have pedals that are free for you to use. And that's at tseaudio.com. And we can sort of A-B this tseaudio.com tube screamer with the one that's in guitar rig. So let's do that now. So I have this loaded on the track and it's bypassed here. But uh, the settings are very similar, as you can see. The drive is down here at three o'clock. Volume's all the way up, tones at one o'clock. So let's listen to the uh, guitar rig tube screamer. Okay. We'll turn it off and listen to the TSE tube screamer. So as you can see, the TSE tube screamer does a pretty good job of emulating the screamer effect that's in the uh, guitar rig. So that's a viable option. Uh, that's a viable option for effects, for uh, overdrive effects. Uh, I like to use, as I said, the PRS Archon. So I like to use the Archon, but what would be an analog for the Archon? Well, that'll uh, lead us to our next site, igniteamps.com. Uh, you can get some amps here, and you can get one of the, the impulse response loader that I like to use, so we'll go to software here. Um, Libra, I haven't seen this thing yet, this is insane. Uh, six way or whatever, eight channel impulse response loader. The one that I use is called Nadir. Uh, right here, you can load your own impulses. You can find some impulses from like red wires or something for free if you don't have them yet. Just uh, Google them. Uh, I use the red wires free set sometimes and you know, a lot of my plugin packs have uh, impulses as well. But f messing around with different impulses is a great way to alter your guitar tone for cheap. They also have amps here like this Emissary. Um, so this is like a one-stop shop, some pedals uh, for cool guitar emulation software that is free, or a lot of it was free. I know that Nadir was free when I downloaded it. That's all I'll say. I don't know if the rest of this stuff is free. So uh, so yeah, check it out. TSE Audio, Ignite Amps. That's some free stuff if you want to get into this game. And those are my five tips. Uh, you know, play... You know, dial in your tone like you're going to play, number one. Number two, the signal chain, it doesn't matter what product you use, you can use whatever products you use as long as you're thinking about an appropriate signal chain. Number three, if you're going to do multiple tracks, you know, do something slightly different. Number four, impulse responses are your friends. You can find free ones on the internet and you can stack them, which you couldn't do in the real world. And five, there are some free resources out there. And finally, I'm gonna tell you guys about a product I got. It's this thing, it's changing my life. What it is, is a little footstool for your foot while you play guitar. And if you're doing a song like this one, where there's a bunch of guitar tracks and a bunch of bass tracks, you sort of get a little foot rest for your foot, and then you can play guitar a lot longer. And this is actually a great tip for recording in the box, because I'd say the majority of my life, I was standing up when I would play guitar. I was in a room drinking beer with a bunch of dudes being loud. Now I'm wearing headphones playing really quietly in the middle of the night at my house uh, in, in a chair. And I think that sometimes, you know, with this thing, you know, the guitar sliding off and it sucks. So like just having a little foot rest can change your whole ability to work for long hours on intricate guitar parts or not so intricate guitar parts. Um, so I'll link to this foot rest in the description. It's an affiliate link. But I found this product extremely useful. And so those are my five tips plus one bonus tip. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.